And welcome to this week's edition of the Life and Legacy Show, sponsored by the Secular Law Firm, where great families make great estate plans, not good estate plans, not okay estate plans. We do great estate planning. Uh, and our uh, our mission with this radio show is to bring you some information that hopefully you find interesting, hopefully you find educational. Uh, and um, our, our goal is to uh, to get you to do some good planning. Hopefully with us, if not with us, do good planning with somebody else, but do good planning because I am sick and tired of dealing with crisis situations where a family had an opportunity to do some estate planning. They didn't take that opportunity. Then life threw them a curveball. Life's a mess now. And we're, uh, we're trying to manage some financial, emotional, um, crisis. And so, um, Remember, this show is for your education and your information. It is not legal advice. You should not make legal or financial decisions based on what you hear on this or any other radio show. Uh, legal situations tend to need legal advice. We're here anytime. You can find me at secklerlawfirm.com, S E C H L E R lawfirm.com, or you can give me a call at 724 546 4227. Now, a couple of announcements before we get into the thing, and I think this is going to be an interesting show. We're going to be talking about the uh, the TV show Yellowstone uh, and how uh, I see it, some similarities with what we do for our clients. Um, before I get into that, a couple of dates uh, to throw at you. This week coming up, we've got a couple of estate planning and elder law workshops in Cranberry Township. We also have our first uh, South Hills workshop in three years. Uh, so if you've been listening to the show, last couple of weeks I've been talking about this event. We've still got a couple of seats left, though a lot of people have signed up for it. Um, we're going to be in South Point on May the 17th. There's an afternoon session at 2 o'clock. There's an evening session at 6 o'clock. So if you're working, you can come after work. Um, I would encourage you to do so. We, we deliver a ton of good information on wills versus trusts, revocable trusts versus irrevocable trusts, different taxes, long-term care. How does the long-term care system work? If I need to go in a nursing home, how uh, do I keep myself from going broke? Because I know nursing homes are $150,000 to $180,000 a year, and I would prefer, if I need that type of care, um, to get it without going broke in a process. Now, for those of you saying, I'm never going to a nursing home, just consider this point. Nursing homes are full of people who were never going to nursing homes, right? Nobody wants to go to a nursing home, yet there's wait lists. So I would encourage you to get your head out of the sand and consider the fact that when you're 85, when you're 90, when you're later in life, things could happen that are outside of your control and you're going to need this level of care and it is your responsibility to understand how these rules work so that you and your family don't go broke if you get sick. The Alzheimer's Association is telling us that one in three seniors will get dementia. Other organizations are telling us two out of three seniors are going to need some form of long-term care. That likely means you're going to need some form of long-term care. Odds are we're going to need some help. And if we're going to need some help, where am I going to get the help? How am I going to pay for it? These are the things that we teach you at the Three Secrets Workshop. The talk is called the Three Secrets to Protect Your Family and Finances. And I'm going to teach you about some legal tools that you need to know about to fight off the, the hungry wolves that want to come get your stuff if you get sick. And I'm not talking when I say hungry wolves. I am not talking about the nursing home. The nursing home is a care provider and we need their help. People who work in nursing homes, especially after the COVID lockdowns and whatnot, are typically angels. Um, they are not bad people. They are there to take care of you. The people who own these organizations are not bad people. They are there to take care of you. Um, and the problem is, though, that we have this crazy government rule book that requires you to go broke if you need a nursing home. See, what a lot of people don't realize in your senior years, if you're on Medicare, see, we all pay into the system for 30, 40, 50 years with the understanding that when I turn 65, I'm going to have health coverage, except that Medicare doesn't pay for the single biggest expense that seniors face, and that is custodial long-term care. They just don't pay for care in a nursing home. Short-term rehab, yes. Long-term stay, no. You're on your own. At today's rates, $400, $450 a month until you run out of money, which to me is unacceptable. I do not accept these rules for my family. 
Um, if I get sick, my wife is not going to go broke. I consider that my personal responsibility. And so what we can do is we can become educated on how the rules actually work, because if you understand how the rules work, there are opportunities in the rules. OK, yes, the long term care system is a problem, but all opportunities are gift wrapped in problems. And so if we take the time to understand the problem, if we take the time to understand the government rules, then we can understand, oh, but there's these things that I can do to set my family up for success. It's, it's, it's no different than any other area of life. There are things you can do to set yourself up for expense. Typically, they're not the easy things. Typically, you got to become educated on the things and then take action. But if you do it, you come to the workshop, we teach you the things you need to know, and you take action. Well, now maybe we just saved your house from the nursing home. Maybe I just made sure that your spouse or your kids have a house to live in and some money in the bank. Um, which seems to me to be part of this whole effort of saving for retirement, keeping a nest egg. It seems to me most of my clients want to keep their stuff. They don't want anyone else to get it. Um, and they wanted to get it to their family members on their terms and conditions without any undue headache, expense, taxation, or risk of loss to a thing like a nursing home. Simple enough, right? Who would not want that for their family? And yet most people don't take the time to become educated on these things because it's not fun to think about, oh God, I got to go talk to a lawyer. I don't want to go talk to a lawyer. Um, I'd rather go to the dentist and have him drill in my teeth, right? And so we do these fun workshops to to remove the pressure of coming and talking to us. You come to a group session, we teach you all this stuff for free, and then you can make a decision whether you want to move forward with the law firm. Um, and then our next step, at least at the secular law firm, is another class. We don't even make it a one-on-one -on -one high pressure thing. We teach estate planning in classes with groups of people um, because one, it allows us to keep our costs low. You working one-on-one -on -one with an attorney the entire way through the process is expensive. You working it as part of a class where I can educate five, six, seven families at a time rather than one at a time allows us to keep our billable attorney hours down and folks, attorneys aren't cheap, which because I can keep the hours down now, I can keep the price down. So you can get an amazing estate plan for a very good price. Um, and, uh, and so that's, that's kind of my proposition to you, but here's what we're going to be talking about today. The TV show Yellowstone. Now, spoiler alert, if you have not watched Yellowstone, you really, really should. Uh, it's a fantastic TV show. Um, and, um, I'm going to be talking about a couple of things that happen, not in great detail. Um, but here's the general premise. Kevin Costner plays a guy named John Dutton. John Dutton owns, uh, a ranch called the Yellowstone Ranch. Okay. Um, it is in the general area of Yellowstone National Park, but he owns the Yellowstone Ranch. Uh, and it's a huge chunk of property. I don't know how many acres or whatnot. And, and it's been in the family for generation after generation. There's now prequels to the show talking about the, the, the Duttons of the past and how they came to own the ground. I haven't actually watched those shows. But in the cast of characters in Yellowstone, um, Costner is the boss man, John Dutton, and he's got a couple of kids. Um, he's lost a kid, uh, but Beth and, and a guy named Casey and a guy named Jamie, who have interesting family dynamics. Uh, and then he's got a son-in-law who goes by Rip, uh, who is a complete tough guy. He's awesome. He's everybody's favorite uh, character in the show. Now, here's the general premise of the show, though. Kevin Costner has one thing in mind. He's only got one thing in mind. And that is keeping the ranch, right? He owns the ranch. Other people would like to have the ranch. Uh, and his only mission in life is to keep the ranch. He has lost children in the battle to keep the ranch. Um, and so here's a guy who I can relate with, right? Because I think most of us are of the school of thought that if I own a thing, I want to keep the thing. Nobody's going to steal it from me. Right now, I can't relate to to John Dutton as a ranch holder, ranch owner. I don't have tens of thousands of acres of the most beautiful ground in the world. Um, can't relate to him. I would love to, but I can't relate to him from that standpoint. But I can relate to him that I do have some stuff and that stuff I have. I'd like to keep. Um, I don't want to give it to the government. I don't want to lose it to taxation. Right. And so here he is. And he takes throughout the episodes, throughout the seasons, he and his family take massive action 
to keep the ranch. They've been in gunfights. John Dutton has been shot. His kids have been shot. His daughter was blown up in a bombing attack uh, in one of the episodes, all in an effort to keep the ranch. They've, Beth, who's awesome, um, is an attorney who participated in an active hostile takeover of a law firm who was trying to do litigation against the ranch to take it, right? There have been, uh, over the seasons, there have been uh, developers who want to bring jobs to the region, which might be good for everybody except for the Dutton family. Um, they want to build an airport on the ranch. There is a, a looming threat of if Dutton dies, we don't have enough money to pay the death taxes on the ranch. Um, there's all types of people coming after the ranch in, in every episode. And John Dutton and his family are willing to take massive action in order to keep what they've got. And I, that's the underlying, that's the underlying plot of this, this whole show. And of course there's, you know, different dynamics between the characters and, and great acting and great musicians that actually are actors in the show. And it's, and it's fantastic. But can't we all relate to that a little bit? You may not have a, a ranch in Montana, but you may have your home, which to you is your homestead and it is your ranch. Um, you may have some money in the bank and that is your money in the bank. Uh, you have worked for decades to build the money in the bank. And wouldn't you take some action to keep it if somebody was trying to take it from you? Like if, if, if we could imagine all your money sitting in a money bag on a kitchen table, um, it's just right there, all your money and the hundred dollar bills wrapped up in a canvas money bag from the movies. And it's sitting right there on the kitchen table. And then a person walks into the house with the intention of taking the money bag off of the kitchen table. Most of us would take some action to prevent that from occurring. We just wouldn't watch the person walk out the door with our bag of money. Um, would we tackle the person? Would we call the police? Would we fight the person? Would we try to lock the person up? What would we do to the person who's trying to take our entire nest egg in order to keep the nest egg for ourselves and our family members? I think most people would try to stop the person from taking the money bag. Now, this is really simple when you when you make it as simple as a person wants to take your money bag. But don't you understand that the government rule book is set up to take your money bag, right? This is the point that I've been trying to make over and over in this radio show and whenever we do our public speaking is my experience has been in my own life and watching what unfolds in my clients' lives is that Nobody's really looking out for the middle anymore, right? Um, when was the last time that you felt a, a conscious effort to improve the lives of middle class Americans, right? We have a term for this. It's called the war on the middle class, right? The richer get richer, the poorer get poorer, and the middle class is getting drugged down, not up, not upward mobility, down, right? Inflation. Inflation outpaces, outpaces the money that we have in our pocket. Um, that's a an event, That's a symptom of the war on the middle class. Um, healthcare costs rising is a symptom. Jobs and in wages not rising that's a symptom. Taxation is a symptom. Let me tell you a story about this thing called the Secure Act. Right, the Secure Act was an act that Congress passed almost unanimously, left, right, all of them voted for this thing called the SECURE Act back in 2019. It became law in 2020, which effectively put a death tax on middle-class Americans. Nobody talks about it that way, but that's what they did, right? Um, it impacts your retirement accounts and your IRA, your 401k. It used to be the case if you passed away and you still had IRA or 401k money and you left that to your kids, that money would go to your kids is what's called an inherited IRA. And if my dad left me some money when he passed away, let's say I'm 55 or 60 years old, I could take that money and I could leave it in the stock market, invest it for a couple of decades, taking little distributions along the way. But that money could grow and be there for me during my retirement years. So we had a situation where mom and dad's retirement account would become the adult children's retirement account. And that was an opportunity 
for the adult children, maybe to save their own money and pass it on. And now we have the opportunity for upward mobility of the middle class because the greatest transfer of wealth in human history is the American baby boomer who, when they pass away, will leave massive wealth, generationally speaking, to their children. All right. And most of that money is in retirement accounts. And so along comes this thing called the SECURE Act, which sounds like a nice thing, a SECURE Act. Who wants to vote against something called the SECURE Act? I mean, what do we want? We want the Insecure Act. Um, and so they pass this thing called the SECURE Act. And here's what it does. After my dad passes away, if he leaves me that retirement account, <clears throat> now I have to pull all the money out of the retirement account within the first 10 years after he passes away. I don't get to leave it in there for my life expectancy. And if when dad passes away, I'm 55 years old, I'm still working, which means I'm in a higher income tax bracket because I'm working. Now I got to take dad's uh, IRA and put it on top of my 1040 tax return because it's all ordinary income. And the thing is going to get smoked. Okay, so this is a tax that is due on middle class Americans who have retirement accounts within a defined period of time after you pass away because you pass away. That, my friends, is a death tax on the middle class. And it's not a left issue. It's not a right issue. These clowns all voted for this thing. And so now we got a death tax on the middle class. But wealthy people and I love wealthy people. I'd love to be a wealthy people. Wealthy people, if we could agree that a married couple with $20 million in the bank, we could we could call that person wealthy, right? Uh, and I know it's a relative term. They may not even feel wealthy with that kind of money. It's, it, but a person with $20 million in the bank could right now pass away with no federal estate tax, no death tax, because the federal estate tax limitations, which would typically impact these families, the lifetime exemption is currently almost $13 million. Well, that's $13 million each for a married couple, $26 million. So, so a family with $20 million currently, no death tax, fine, fine. But then why do middle class folks who don't have $20 million, but we might have a retired school teacher who saved a half a million in a retirement account. Now, when she passes away, that money goes to her kids and we got a tax on that money within a defined period of time after she passed away because she passed away. That's a death tax on the middle class. And four years ago, it didn't exist. Four years ago, we had 30 years to pay that tax. Now we're paying it in 10. That's who's in charge, guys. When 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 we're talking about a thing called the war in the middle class, it's the sneaky stuff like that that comes to get you. And the next sneaky thing that's going to come to get you is what happens if I get sick? Because the health care system in this country for seniors is a nightmare. People are going broke. Nursing homes cost $160,000 a year, not because the nursing home is a bad organization. That's not the problem. The problem is they've been telling us a promise that we would have health care when we're in our retirement years, except that Medicare doesn't pay for the single biggest health care expense that seniors face. That's custodial long-term care. They just won't pay for it. So you're out of pocket until you go broke. And what I would like to teach you, if you would like to come to the workshop, is how to protect yourself from the system because there are opportunities in it. I'm going to teach you about a thing called a, an asset protection trust that can protect you from this system because I believe you didn't work your whole life to save some stuff, to own a house, to, to own some money, just to lose that house and money to a broken government rule book. That's my opinion. That's why my law firm exists. Okay. Now, let's get back to the topic of the radio show, which is Think about how John Dutton would handle this situation. If John Dutton's character, who we all kind of idolize in a way because of his, his willingness to take action, if John Dutton were in a situation that the rest of us are in, middle class Americans were in, and he understood that there was a one in three chance that we could lose the ranch, lose our house to a nursing home, one in three chance that we would get dementia, two in three chance we would need some form of long term care. Don't you think he would take some action? Now, maybe not the same kind of stuff he does on the TV show. You know, people die and all kind of stuff on the TV show. That's not what I'm suggesting. What I'm suggesting is, what if we just put your house in a trust and then you don't have to worry about it anymore? That seems pretty simple um, compared to what we see going on in Yellowstone. But it's the same idea. You own some stuff. Some people are coming after it. Tax man, long-term care man whatever it is, they want your stuff. They don't want your kids to inherit the money. They want it. And I'm here to tell you, there are ways to protect yourself from this at risk. Come to 
our upcoming Three Secrets Workshop, the Three Secrets to Protect Your Family and Finances, where I'm going to show you how the system really works, how you can put some stuff into a trust to protect your stuff from the system. Um, without giving up control, without creating tax problems, without creating yourself a whole bunch of headache. Uh, and if you will take the time with me to understand how these things work and understand how it may impact your family, you now have the opportunity to decide whether you want to take the action to protect yourself. You may still decide to not take the action to protect yourself. At least you're making an informed decision. But so many people run into this this meat grinder of a government rule book when they get sick without ever having thought about what would happen and how they could protect themselves. And so my invitation to you is to come to one of our three secrets uh, workshops where we're going to teach you how to do this. You can find the workshops on my website. We offer them fairly frequently. Um, go to secklerlawfirm.com, S-E-C-H-L-E-R lawfirm.com. And on there, you're going to find a page where you can sign up for our upcoming estate planning in elder law workshops. We hold them um, fairly frequently in Cranberry Township. Uh, and we have our first um, in four years workshop in the South Hills on May the 17th. There's a two o'clock session. There's a six o'clock session. Um, we already have several dozen families signed up for this thing, but there are a few seats left. Register online. It is a free workshop. And then during the free workshop, we're going to teach you these concepts I've been chatting about today. And then I'm also going to tell you what it looks like to work with our law firm. A quick note on that. Not all law firms are built equally. Not law, all law firms operate the same way. And we have made a change in our law firm, which has allowed us to lower our fees while providing great estate plans for our clients. Because what we're doing is we're doing group planning sessions rather than one-on-one. -on -one. With one-on-one -on -one with an attorney, you're paying for that attorney's time individually. But in working as a group, several clients working together with the attorney, now we can divide up that attorney's time and the price can come down. And so um, I am real proud of the system we created because our clients are getting better estate plans for a better price uh, and they're understanding it better because of the class that we're doing. We're teaching classes where you, you really get to understand these tools, really under, get to understand how, uh, how they could work for your family, and then you can make the decisions that you need to make on um, how to protect your family. So come to the upcoming workshops. I promise you, you're going to learn a lot. I'm not going to waste your time. I don't like to waste my time. Wasting your time would be a waste of my time, uh, and we're not going to play that game. I'm going to give you some good information, and then you can decide what to do with that information uh, after you have it. So Again, we have uh, several coming up this week. There's Cranberry Township opportunity and a South Hills opportunity. Not sure when we're coming back to the South Hills. So if you are at all intrigued by this, I encourage it. Register, show up. Um, it's only an hour and a half talk. You're going to learn a lot of great information. And, um, and we're going to teach you to take the steps to protect yourself. Um, and, you know, I, I think... I think that uh, I think if you're at all curious, this would be a good use of your time. Now, I just want to make quick mention of a thing. Um, we met a client the other day who did not plan ahead. Um, and because she did not plan ahead, all of their assets were subject to this risk of long term care expense. And her husband got sick and she's been taking care of him and she's concerned about the nursing home. And for that family, what we were able to do was keep the gentleman out of the nursing home because we taught her about this program that the state has called the LIFE program, Living Independently for the Elderly. Living Independently for the Elderly is an awesome program. Nationally, it's called PACE. Don't worry about that. Here, it's called the LIFE program. There are several locations in Allegheny County. There's a location in all the surrounding counties where you can receive your care in the community, still stay at home, and it's almost like going to the nursing home for a day. You go to the center, they, they have your medication, they have meals, they have physical therapy, they do the things that are typically done in nursing homes. At the end of the day, you get on the van and you come home. Uh, and what's beautiful about the LIFE program is um, that if you qualify for Medicaid benefits, which we can help you do, um, it can be free. So maybe you're in a situation where you've got a, a, a senior who maybe we're thinking about long-term care placement in a home, um, but we'd really like to keep the person in our home. 
we just don't see a path to keep them in the home where the life program might be that path. If you reach out to the office, we'll teach you all about it. But the reason I'm talking about it right now is because next weekend's show, I'm going to be joined by a special guest from Community Life, um, from the from the life program here in Butler County, rather. It's called Life Butler um, Community Life or, or the institutions down in, in Pittsburgh, but it's the same program. So we're going to be joined by a special guest from the life program who's going to talk all about that program. So next week, check it out. It's a, it's one of my favorite um, little secrets in the long-term care world on how to stay in your home as long as possible, because that's what most people tend to want to do. So that's next week's episode in the interim schedule for one of our workshops. I look forward to seeing you then. Again, don't make any legal or financial decisions uh, based on this or any other radio show. If you have a legal problem, you need some legal help, give us a call 724-546-4227 or go to secularlawfirm.com. Thanks for listening.